This video is brought to you by Camtasia, the industry leading screen recording and video editing software. More about them later in the video. So I have a lot of tutorials on my YouTube channel and I get a lot of great feedback from my tutorials, just people saying how much they enjoyed them, how easy it is to learn from them and so on. So I wanted to share with you how I put them together and things that I really think about when I'm putting my tutorials together and the ways that I make it easy for people to easily consume and enjoy my tutorials. And you can use this information for gaming tutorials, software tutorials, educational tutorials. And with the exception of a few things in this video, you can even use this information for cooking tutorials and crafting tutorials tutorials and any other real life type of tutorials that you're doing. So that you can make sure that your viewers are getting the value from the tutorial that you intended in the first place. And so they'll watch your videos for a longer period of time, which will help your videos perform better on YouTube. And so they'll see your tutorials and how you do things as a great resource for the type of content that you make. And we're starting right now with the very first thing, which is make sure you're being inclusive in your communication. Here's what I mean. People are clicking on your video because they're trying to learn something something from you. And because of that, you want to make sure that you're considering where they might be in their journey that got them to your video. When you're considering that, if you're doing advanced tutorials, then in that case, the people coming in are going to be a little bit more advanced. And in that case, for your advanced tutorials, you can lean a little bit harder on the language around the software that you're sharing or the materials that you're using or whatever the thing is with the type of content that you're making. When you're considering that, if you're making advanced tutorials, then in that case, you can lean a little bit more into the industry language. You can lean a little bit more into the nuances of the software. You can just kind of gloss over maybe some of the materials that you're using for the project in terms of not needing to explain them. At least not explain them as much or not go into as much detail about them because the people should already be familiar with those things because they're coming into an advanced tutorial. If you're making beginner tutorials, however, it's a totally different thing because if you're reaching people that are just getting into the software that you're sharing or just getting into the hobby that you're sharing content about, they might not know anything about what it is that you're talking about and the things that you automatically take for granted because you're very familiar with your subject matter, that stuff is the thing that the people that are just coming into it, they just don't know yet. So because of that, it's really important to make sure that the language that you're using is extremely basic. What I mean by that is if you're doing gaming tutorials, you're doing software tutorials, there's a really good chance you're really familiar with the game or you're really familiar with the software that you're sharing. That's why you're sharing and teaching other people how to do it. And since we get so familiar with the stuff that we talk about, it's really easy to assume that the person that's going to be watching our videos also is familiar or as familiar with what it is that we're talking about as we are. And if you're doing real life tutorials like crafting or DIY projects or something like that, it's really easy to say, next, grab your mug, then grab your bottle of not bad at all and tap it right up against your mug without explaining to them what not bad at all is and without explaining why they should be tapping it against their mug or what exactly it's going to do for them or the project when they're tapping it against their mug. And for the record, not bad at all isn't even a thing. I'm just saying not bad at all in a way that makes it sound like it's an elixir or something. But anyway, when we take that approach, we end up skipping over things or not explaining why certain elements of what it is that we're sharing are important to the viewer or what it is that they're trying to learn. And when that happens, a viewer gets confused and they end up shutting the video down or going and watching a tutorial from somebody else that's doing what I'm telling you right now. Next, if you're doing any type of screen recording for your tutorials, make sure that you're considering the mobile viewer experience please. So a quick side story for you. Right now I'm in the process of learning how to make better music. And as part of that, I'm watching a ton of tutorials on Logic Pro X and uh, all types of different plugins and things like that. I can't tell you how many times that I've been watching a video and the content creator is making a tutorial and they're just using OBS and they're just doing a basic screen recording. That's great if you're just trying to reach people on computers, but a majority of the watch time on YouTube is actually coming from mobile devices. When I'm watching these tutorials, I'm trying to learn how to use this software. I'm trying to watch it on my phone while I'm trying to replicate what it is that they're doing on the computer so I can follow along. Or I'll watch a tutorial on my phone while I'm drinking coffee or eating or, you know, something else like that. And when the creator I'm watching, and some of these are established YouTube channels, some of them are people that are just getting started and they're sharing some really cool information. But when I'm watching these tutorials and they're not zooming in to show me what it is that they're talking about or to show me where it is that they're clicking on the screen, I'm out of there because I can't see what it is that they're talking about. This is what a Logic Pro tutorial looks like on a mobile device. How in the world am I 
I going to follow this if they're not zooming in and showing me what it is that they're talking about? I can't, and I'm not even going to try because there's so many other content creators who are also making similar tutorials who do the things that I'm talking about right here in this video. I'll watch them instead. If you're somebody that records your screen and you don't want your viewers to have that type of experience, here's what you should do. Download Camtasia. It's easy to use, it's available for PC and Mac, and it lets you zoom in and out of your screen recordings. You can put customized colors behind your cursor so people can actually follow along, even if they're watching on a small screen. You can draw arrows and boxes and even put a spotlight on whatever part of your screen recording you need the viewer to focus on at that moment in time. Even though they have a 30-day free trial, the software itself isn't free, but they also don't have that subscription that's so common with pretty much everything else in our lives these days. Hmm, not bad at all. But Camtasia even lets you pause your screen recording so you don't eat up unnecessary hard drive space while you're trying to put everything together, and we all know how important that is. And if you want, you can even edit your videos and do some light audio processing in Camtasia as well. But anyway, Camtasia is awesome. Stop using OBS for your screen recordings. It's working against you and it's making you make low quality tutorials that are causing people to leave your videos and not get the information that you're intending. And don't get me wrong, the value is there, but the value that you're intending to give to your viewer is is really hard for them to receive if you're not considering the experience that they're having when they're interacting with your tutorials. If you are interested in Camtasia, I have a link to it down in the description where you can try it out for 30 days for free. If you do decide to get it, that same link will save you 10%. Download it, try it, and see what it can do for you, and you're gonna end up coming back and be like, hey Nick, thanks for sending me over to Camtasia like a bunch of other people have done in some other videos that I've made about Camtasia. But anyway, the idea is to make it easy for people to just follow along with what it is that you're showing them in your tutorials. And if you wanna see this, it in, in real life practice, just open up your phone right now, go look at any of the tutorials that you've made on your channel and think to yourself, somebody's watching this, like how easy it is for them to see exactly what it is that I'm showing them here in this tutorial. And you'll see what I mean. The next thing when it comes to making great tutorials for your viewers is as content creators, I'm sure you would agree that some of us tend to be a little bit more energetic or enthusiastic about the content that we're making. That's great. It's effective. It works. It grabs attention. It keeps people entertained, watching videos and all of that. However, when you're making tutorials, slow it down just a little bit. And the reason you want to do that is the same idea that I just went through in terms of the screen recording is you just want to make it easy for people to follow along. When you communicate really fast, then some people, especially if your language that you're speaking in your videos isn't their native language, it can be difficult for people to follow along. So because of that, try to slow it down just a little bit. You don't have to go grandma speed, but slowing it down a little bit can make it easier for people to consume what you're putting together. And look, sometimes it's easy to forget that. You know, I have a lot of great comments on some of my videos, but I also do have a lot of comments on my videos as well telling me to slow down. That's why I'm passing this on to you as well. I get a lot of comments on my videos, people tell me to slow down. And then of course I get comments later if people are like, hey, I'm glad you went through this quickly because it didn't waste a bunch of time and so on. But at the end of the day, you just want to try to find that balance with your viewers and what works best with your content and your channel. And as a quick side note, if you are somebody that talks fast like I do in some of my videos, then in that case, you might want to let your viewers know that in the YouTube player, there is an option to where you can speed up or slow down videos. So you might want to bring that to their attention so that if you are communicating in a way to where it's just taking them a little bit more effort to pick up what you're saying, they can slow the video down because that option is available. Another really important part of making a great tutorial is, of course, keeping your edit tight. What I mean by that is if you're making a tutorial and you hit the save button and it takes a while for something to save, cut that part out. If you're making gaming tutorials, then of course you wanna cut out any loading screens that aren't relevant to your tutorials or anything really within the game, any of the story, anything that's not relevant to the tutorial that you're sharing. If you're making real life tutorials, then in that case, when you're doing time lapses of paint drying or whatever the thing is, in that case, just try to speed through those things as fast as you can, unless it's super interesting to watch. The reason you wanna cut out these things is because they are a drag on the viewer experience. And if you are wanting to get more views on the tutorials that you're making, click into the this playlist right here. It's got a handful of videos in there that's going to teach you how to get more views on YouTube. And if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.